prayer across my mind, may you be on the right side of grace in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says in that verses 16 and 17 of that look that we read, if you believe, you'll be saved. If you don't believe, you'll be condemned. The same grace that saves is the one that condemns. So I pray again, may you be on the right side of grace. May grace work better for you this year. May you never regret serving God in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So may I ask this morning, how was your week? How did it go this week? Did it work out? Would you say that God is faithful? Is there anything you'd like to say thank you to Jesus for? You know, one of the things we have to realize is, even though he has not solved all our problems, he has solved some problems. And so it's important we focus on the ones he has solved. So that you can resolve the rest. Praise the Lord. I just like you where you are seated. Just recall one thing that gladdens your heart. Maybe it's a project that you have not completed. But the fact that you started it. God is involved with it. He's the author and the finisher. He has not finished it but he started it. Whatever it is. That you are still in between the beginning and the ending. Can you just appreciate the name of the Lord for it? Just thank him. 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 Big things happen, but also small things happen with God. He says it should be, it will be like a tree that is planted by rivers of water. Psalm 1 verse 3. The water is trickling. You are not growing all of a sudden. You are growing daily, but something is evolving. It may not be sudden, but every day is wetting your roots. Something is evolving. Life is coming. Grace is flowing. Favor is showing up. In every way, you are enjoying the benefits of the Lord daily. Someone online, just... Appreciate the blessings that you have drawn from the Lord. That you are there to have someone to call up to. We bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Most High God. In Jesus' name we worship. Holy Spirit, our strengthener, comforter, helper. The very one who is always present on the spot of the moment. As we consider again the power of things, I ask. In every heart. Let the love of God be shed abroad afresh in the name of Jesus. As we express gratitude to God, let grace to do it more in order to gain more. Let that grace flow to us more in this service in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your breath that strengthens, sustains, and stabilizes us. When it turns to glory to you, Father. And Lord, we sanctify this environment to the blood of Jesus. I pray for someone in the house this morning. Whatever you left at home that you are concerned about, may God visit it now in the name of Jesus Christ. You will get back home to receive good news. Thank you, Lord, for confirming your word. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Praise the Lord. Please say with me, Ebenezer. Do you mind if you spell it E B E N E Z E R? So let me ask if you were engaged with the spellings that you were expressing. How many times did you use the word, call the word E? If you said four after you checked, you should celebrate those who said three times. <laughs> because you, check, you checked it from the book, they checked it from outside the book. I pray whatever you are missing that is a gap in your life, God will fill it in the name of Jesus. I hope someone remembers that our Lord Jesus Christ says in John chapter 14 from verse 26, whatever I have taught you that you have forgotten, the Holy Spirit will bring them back to your remembrance. I believe God this year, whatever is a gap in our lives, grace will fill it in the name of Jesus Christ. This morning I'd like to share on the power of constant gratitude. And that is what I mean by Ebenezer. Please say with me again, Ebenezer. First Samuel chapter 7 verse 12. This was an act of worship that the prophet Samuel exercised in public on behalf of the nation of Israel. First Samuel chapter 7 verse 12 says, Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen and called its name Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. Thus far the Lord has helped us. I'm charging today that we be grateful to God always so we never lack attracting his help. Thus far, when Samuel raised that stone, 
erased it with an expression of gratitude for one thing. The Lord has helped us. And he used one phrase that will let us know that God has not finished the work. Thus far, the Lord has helped us. So, we are acknowledging that help along the way. We have not gotten to where we are going, but we are not where we were. And so, along the way, we say, Lord, this is our emblem, our symbol of gratitude. Just to let you know, we did not forget that you lift us up from the Mary Clay. Is somebody in the house with me here? Yeah. Now, I'll give us a synopsis of what I mean by Ebenezer. This story started from um, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1. Basically, this story on Ebenezer is about how God helped Israel in a very simple way. In a way that all the battles they were to fight, they did not fight anyone. God was helping them behind them. Praise the Lord, somebody. Every experience they had. War will come so close. Knock at the door, but it will not enter. The Bible says in Psalm 91, a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand. He says it will not come near you. Only God knows how many armed robbers pass through your street that did not enter your door. Am I making sense? Only God knows how many demons have passed over your residence. There are none of them afflicted you with bad health. Am I making sense to somebody here? Now, so the synopsis started, you know, uh, the, the Philistines basically were long-term enemies of Israel. So it all started from 1 Samuel chapter 5, verse 1, when the Philistines came and they took, how would I call it, what should be the very core, the central thing that bound Israel together which was the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. The core thing that represented the activation of the supernatural. The thing that when everything goes wrong, what they come back to to get everything back, the Philistines took it down. I mean, to understand that, just imagine somebody taking the brain box of your car. How will you start the car? <laughs> you know that with our bodies too, the brain is the most important part. Imagine someone, um, maybe if you don't have a car, uh, maybe if you use a computer, somebody taking your computer, uh, your hard disk, what is remaining? Now, if that does not resonate with you, imagine your smartphone. As beautiful as it is, as expensive as it is, if I take the SIM card, what is the smartphone for? <laughs> Am I making sense? <laughs> or, or maybe worst, worst case scenario, I, I get you know, the password to your iCloud document and I can have access anytime. Maybe that will not pay you because you don't really have any property document, anything anybody gain access to. Maybe it's only your. Some people don't even use iCloud. Imagine. Which one will pay you the most? I think the password to your account will be better. <laughs> don't you think so? <laughs> if you are seated here and on the way, you lost your card, your credit card or debit card. And while you are in the service, you are seeing a lot that they are taking money from that car. Will you listen to my message? <laughs> your, your, they have your password, every OTP, your access, the, everything is in the hand of the enemy. No matter what I'm prophesying, the problem will not leave your mind. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That was the state Israel was in. They took the core of their nation and they carried the hard disk away to the enemy camp. And you know, the place where they took it, let me read 1 Samuel chapter 5, verse 1. The Bible says, Then the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer. Please save me from Ebenezer. Save me from Ebenezer. They brought it from Ebenezer. I, 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 I want you to see why what we read from 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12 became important. It was the place where the problem started from. That Samuel went back to, to raise a stone and say, Lord, we thank you. And the problem never came back. Hello, somebody here. If you got that, you have gotten the message of today. When this problem persisted, when they took the ark, each Israel felt tormented by their worst long-term enemies' feeling stress. They kept, you know, stressing them. But God was walking behind the scene. Please set me behind the scene. In 1 Samuel chapter 6, 
they brought the ark of God to the house of their own God. You know, they wanted to test power for power. And just the ark being in the area, the same room with Dagon, the, the, the God of the, of, of the Philistines, the Bible says it fell. They returned the, 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 the God made by hand. When he first fell, he fell peacefully. When they returned him back, the way he fell, he broke his neck, broke his hand, God cut him to pieces. <laughs> At that time, in verse 2 of 1 Samuel chapter 1, the Bible says, the Philistines now began to confer. They called a national conference. How do we return the ark of God to Israel? I pray by the mercy of God. Anyone that touches it behind you, God will fight them for you in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, in all of these circumstances and expressions of power, Israel was not aware. They didn't know that God was fighting for them behind them. But something also happened. That is not the end of the game. That is a story on the side of the enemy. Let's come to the story of the, on the side of those who experience the losses. In 1 Samuel chapter 7, the Israel now realized something. After God dealt with Dagon, the God of the Philistines, they decided they were going to return the Ark, they returned with trespass offerings. Now in 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 2, the Bible says, after 20 years, please hear this, after 20 years of restoration, there was no gratitude expression. After 20 years, I God make sure the ark came back. I don't know what God has done for you for 20 years that you, you have forgotten very conveniently to keep saying thank you. You said it once. That's all. God was teaching Israel something. Because they eventually came to a point. They had a monument. Every time they see it, they will remember to say thank you. 20 years passed. Hear this. The ark that was returned did not bless them to its full potential. It was only in the hands of one person. And the nation was not enjoying the grace anymore. Like they were doing. Let me read to you verse 2 of 1 Samuel chapter 7. So it was that the ark remained in Kajas Jerusalem a long time. It was there. How many years? How many years? How many years? May grace that God has brought into your space benefit you and your family in the name of Jesus Christ. It was there 20 years and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. I thought you said you wanted restoration. Restoration had come. But there's no completion yet. Something was missing. And so when Samuel the prophet realized this, he called a conference and said, let's all come to the Lord. Let's try and find out. Offer offerings to the Lord. You are lamenting even though the ark is back. You were lamenting when the ark was not back. The ark is back. You are still lamenting what is missing. So in 1 Samuel chapter 7, in verses 3 and 4, remember we read from verse 2 that the children of Israel were lamenting. So in verse 3 and 4, the Bible says, Then Samuel spoke to, the, to all the house of Israel, saying, if, if you return to the Lord with all your heart, then put away the foreign gods and the asteroids from among you, and prepare Bear your hearts for the Lord and serve him only and he will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. Verse 4. So the children of Israel put away the bears and the asteroids and serve the Lord only. What I want you to see here is the fact that you know many times maybe I should ask you if you think you have committed an offense, or let's say sin against God, and uh, you you attended, you, you have to attend, let's say, an important job interview, and that job interview was not, it didn't quite go very well, and you returned home, and in your dream overnight, you realize it's because something went wrong spiritually. You remember that there's a tithe you were supposed to pay, you didn't pay. Um, there was somebody God said you should forgive, you didn't forgive. You just realized that there was something that blocked the favor that didn't work out well. 
and you want to go back for another session of the interview, do you think you are likely to make a commitment to God after that dream to correct your ways? Do you think you do that or not? I think you will do, right? You realize something is wrong. Now, that's one scenario. Consider another scenario. Your salary was delayed. Payment on your contract was delayed. It was paid. And you still feel, you know, that something is still wrong. While you want to go and say, thank you, Lord, for this check I received, are you likely to say, Lord, forgive me for the sin I committed? No. Why? He has done it. We usually take forgiveness or connection with what we're looking for. Once you have gotten it, you don't bother. Hello, somebody. Are you catching my drift? This was the error that Israel had. When God returned the ark, because grace worked. Listen to me, please. They did not pray for the ark. They did not find the feeling sins. The ark came back by itself. <laughs> After God dealt to the God of the feeling sins. So for them, they continued their lifestyle of not respecting the space for God. So when I want to, we are coming to something. Samuel raised the stone that we read from First Samuel seven twelve. Ebenezer, gratitude. But the first thing he corrected before the expression of gratitude is that disconnection in respecting holiness and the space of God in our lives. I said not to say this. Please, don't take Thanksgiving with levity. Don't consider cleansing your ways only when you want something from God. Every time you need to relate with God, let holiness cleanse you. The Bible says in Romans 4.1, Jesus was declared to be the son of God with power by the spirit of holiness. So the first thing that Samuel addressed was their relationship with God. Don't forget the ark was in their country, in their space. And they were still lamenting that grace was not connecting. And Samuel was trying to find the solution. Please help me the solution. What we are looking at this one is the solution. The major solution we are going to is gratitude. But on the way to Ebenezer, on the way to the place of gratitude, what are the things that are in that they flow again? Something in them. The ark from walking in your land. How can you be so close to where everybody is receiving answers, but yours is different? What is the problem? The ark is not the problem. Like Jesus says in Mark, Matthew chapter 13, the parable of the sower, the seed is the word. The word is never the problem. Let's check our soil, our heart, our environment, our lifestyle. Praise the Lord, somebody here. Now, so when the problem kept repeating itself, after the children of Israel were lamenting, the ark came back, the feeling starts. You know, there's something we need to understand. I came to an understanding that if the devil could have the audacity to attack Jesus, he can attack anybody. If Lucifer could tell God, leave that throne, I want to sit there. Be careful wherever God places you. <laughs> Hello, somebody here. Now, where I'm going is this. The Philistines brought the ark into their territory. Without the children of Israel fighting, God made sure that the ark's presence dealt to their God. They returned the ark. Please hear me. And they still came back to Israel to come and attack them, even though the ark that destroyed their gods is there. Why? The children of Israel were not activating the power. Did you get that? Even though the ark was there, the enemy kept coming there. How can you put a sticker in your house on eagle's wings and everything is going down? What's the problem? Is it that the word is not true? Let God be true. Let every man be a liar. Hello, somebody here. So when the Philistines kept returning and returning, <laughs> something happened. In fact, the worst return they made was on the day that Samuel was about to raise that stone, Ebenezer. The Bible says in verse 10 of 1 Samuel chapter 7, Now as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, 
the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a loud thunder upon the Philistines that day. Please help me that day. I pray the day you express appreciation to God, may heaven open up to make him fight for you in the name of Jesus. And so, confused them that they were over, overcame, excuse me, they were overcome before Israel. Now, what am I saying here? On the spur of the moment, while, you see, it was in the process of I'm cutting this short, just summarizing it. It was in the process of offering, giving burnt offering to God, that that idea of raising the stone came up. So in that process, the Philistines came back again. And just because, you see, let me explain it to you. We're here in this service saying thank you to the Lord. Any thief that wants to hack your account, their aunt will wither in Jesus' name. People were in the presence of God, reconciling with God, amending the way, blocking the opening that the enemy had been coming through, and the enemy made the wrong move at that time to come and attack them. I want you to notice the phrases that were used. God thundered with a loud thunder, which means even the enemies that were not around, when they hear that, they will not come. Hello, somebody here. If you are carrying a gun and you hear a missile land, I think you will cock your gun back. <laughs> Praise the Lord, somebody here. I pray by the mercy of God, anyone that comes out to God will make them an example of who should never come out to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the big lesson, the big lesson about Ebenezer, please help me the big lesson. The big lesson here says, some problems will keep returning. Until we find a permanent way to keep them away. Did you hear that? That's the, that's the summary of Ebenezer. So the Philistines took the ark, 1 Samuel chapter 5, verse 1, from Ebenezer. They returned it. They also returned after the place where they sent the ark to, to keep attacking the children of Israel. Until the Bible says in verse 12 of that 1 Samuel chapter 7. Samuel raised a stone and called it Ebenezer and said, Thus far, explained that word. Thus far, the Lord has helped us. Let's read verse 13 together to see what happened after he raised that. For you to understand what I mean by problems that keep returning until you deploy a permanent way of reversing them. First Samuel chapter 7, verse 13. Can we read together? I want to go. Can we read together? Okay, you are waiting for the projector? What I want you to see here is that Samuel raised a symbol of gratitude for the divine help they received. And from then on, all his days, the feeling signs never returned. Now, can you see 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 13? Can we read together? One to go. So the Philistines were subdued and they did not come anymore into the territory of Israel. And the end of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of, say with me again, all the days of Samuel. The summary of what we have just read together is this. When we thank God for his last help, he will supply the next one. What Samuel did was a simple, powerful, intense way of solving multiple problems with one initiative. Every time I see this stone, and I remember daily, I once received help. I will not need to have that kind of problem anymore. Why? I am daily, constantly expressing gratitude. All that the stone was all about. Please say with me, Ebenezer. He, he explained Ebenezer for some 7 to 12. All it's all about is gratitude. That monument is a symbol of continuity, constancy. If you see any of our monuments in town, whether reinforced or not, you'll find them there the next day. Am I right, sir? So every day, what is that thing that you refer to, that you recall, and every time you recall it, you reverse the pressure that's coming at you? The Bible says on that verse 13 that we read, verse 12 says, Simon raised a stone. Ebenezer, we're grateful for the help. From verse 13, it says, from the day, that day, 
all the days of Samuel, the Philistines remained subdued. They could not come again into the space of Israel. Why? As long as Israel sees Ebenezer, expression of gratitude, that grace will drive back the Philistines. Hello, somebody here. Gratitude is a form of warfare. Did you hear me? The thing that drives away attack when you are sleeping is warfare. You thank God before you go to sleep. The Bible says in Psalms 46 verse 1, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Do you believe that the Lord will keep saving you? Please, I beg you. Always thank him. Not one off when you receive help. But thank him continually. It's a stone. It's a monument. It's something raised. As long as you see it, you thank God then it will come back to drive away what wants to come at you. I love one of the songs that Sandra sang when we, were, when we started the service. You know that song that says, You made a way When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made Do you mind if you sing that song? Mm -hmm. And we're standing here only because you may praise the Lord. What I love about that song is it didn't say you will make a way, it says you made a way, you did it before. When our backs were against the wall, the debtor was uh, the creditor was against you coming at you. There was a threat at work. Whatever your project work it was, it looks as it was not going to end. You were not sure whether your child would survive. Your back was against the wall. This was your last chance. And God made the way. Don't forget. It's easy to forget. Don't forget. That's the essence of the stone. So that you have a reminder to recall what must be reversed. Praise the Lord. Is somebody with me in the house? Eh? So again, let me summarize Ebenezer. Ebenezer means constant gratitude. Please say with me, constant gratitude. Oh, say, Lord, say, constant gratitude. I'm saying what inspires us every time to always express our gratitude to the one who made the way and we will make the way. If he made the way, he will make the way. Praise the Lord. If anything moves against you, the one who made a way will also make a way. Can you say loud, Amen. amen. And there are different ways. For Samuel, he expressed that with a stone. A stone is just a symbol. Please let me symbol. I don't know what the whole symbol is. It could be that you want to have an inscription on a shirt. Or maybe God blesses you, you build your house. You call it praise house. Because you had pressure before you build the house. Just something that is a constant reminder. It could be a legend. Something you tell your children and your children's children. You know what we call uh, moon, uh, tales by Moonlight Abbey <laughs> in the village. What were the stories that your parents told you of how your family over the years evolved? What were the stories that you were told of how you were born? How it was, it was you, you were not supposed to survive. <laughs> Hello, somebody here. When you have those stories, don't just hear them, script them, write them, or have a symbol that reminds you of those stories. Praise the Lord. I mean, we have stories in our family. Even in this ministry, there are stories you need to hear. They are called legion. Legion means stories we keep sharing that can never go away. They represent expressions of the grace that we carry. I, I remember a long time ago when we were first going to buy this building. The man who sold it, he has passed on now. Very funny thing. After we paid, we were supposed to pay a balance. I remember I went to see him where, in the city where he was. And on the way back, I heard they call that some agents were coming to inspect the place, and I called Baba. I said, what happened? He said, they have changed his mind. He's not selling again. That is not the problem. Can you return our money three years? It's, it's, you know, you know the, he told me to my face, I will not return the money. You don't understand. And I'm talking of millions. He said, I will not return it. I said, ah, you will not return it. Then we will be here. Some people come and be inspecting that they want to drive us. I said, ah, I'm not saying we're not going to. Tell the Baba to return our money. He says, you will not return money. On that, then one Sunday morning, 
you know, just like this. The service could not be held. You know, there was a prophetic interjection, and we kept reciting Psalm 91. I just started praying like I was under fire. By Wednesday service, midweek, we're about to start service. I think the service was even on. We just heard some noise outside. What happened? A swarm of bees. I've never seen so many bees like that physically. Okay. Imagine the number of bees were not more than the number of people were in the hall. If one bee, is, when one bee stings you, you can run after one. When 20 come on you, <laughs> you'll be praying that the ground should open up. <laughs> it was so bad. That when we gather them, we put two buckets together. I'm not sure you can imagine. You can, if you were not there, you can, there are people here who were there, they can tell you. It, we're in the city, not in the village. They travel from all over. We're not, we don't know where they come from. All the streets in Ogba, it was our address GPRS. <laughs> Each B had a GPRS attached. They came straight to this address. They didn't enter anywhere else. In Yoruba, they call it Anansi. And this one is sent. If we send it right there. But this is where we'll always be grateful to God. At the point when they got to the entrance of this place, remember Psalm 91 we read on Sunday? Rain out of the blue just started. Bwah! Because they had wings, their wings became wet. The rain trapped them. Right at the entrance, here, at the gate. That's why we're able to check that. So we're gathering them with. with uh, with a what, broom into buckets. They could not fly anymore. God fought for us behind us. You are sitting here. You need to know our Ebenezer. I can give you another Ebenezer. It can never go away. When we were putting on this building, someone wrote to the governor's office. I said they don't want a church in this area. As at that time, there was even some funny things that used to happen around there. People used to die like every week around there. If I were doing the prayers here, that death should stop on this street. You need someone say, ah, you need a uh, Benisa means generations after she remember how we got here. It's a monument. God helped us, and that is why you can sit comfortably. When the governor will send a message. Me, little me. They sent four trucks from the governor's office. Four trucks. Truck, not cow. Truck. Three carrying policemen. And one carrying those who don't speak your language, Malam, they don't speak English. They're like soldier, obey the last order. They carry sledge armor. You know sledge armor? Sledge armor. Not armor. Sledge. That the the, the size is probably bigger than the size of it. That when they hit once. <laughs> For what reason? Pull down the building. That was the only order. But as God will have it, the day before, the Holy Spirit told me, go to camp. I said, I don't have any prayer point. He said, get out of town, go to camp. So I carried my back. My wife said, pray for me. I said, I'm not going to pray. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> Just a city that the Lord will define when we get it. When Abraham left us, he didn't have address. <laughs> I just carried it. I only took one or two books to read. I was not ready to pray. 9 a.m. the following day, after I stayed, I was saying, Lord, what is the prayer point? I got the prayer point because I got a call from the office that four trucks of police and malam are looking for you from the governor's office. That's when the prayer now started. <laughs> Why? Because someone wrote a petition and paid for the petition because I saw the details. But when they got here, as God will have it. This morning we were praying with Zacchaeus. You are still on the tree. Salvation will be in your house. But from where you are, if you don't rush down, you will not make salvation. Jesus started rushing Lazarus. He says, make haste and come down. Before he even tell him that salvation location is in your house, make haste. That week before, I didn't know what happened. If I the first property that our family was supposed to move to at Moe, you know, there are things I think of, and I realize that grace accepts us. By now, I will not be living near a city. I'll be living towards a battle. It was a seed we sowed that brought us back to town. Selah. That property we'll have been living in, we sold it immediately. I don't know what happened. 
In fact, we sold it at a loss of about one million. Nine hundred thousand precisely. I just said, let's do, let's be very fast with this. I did the week before. So we started rushing. So we had finished the building, we painted halfway. So when they came with their retinue of you know soldiers, they called back at Alice and said, the building we saw, they have finished it, so we can't pull it down. So they locked it up. Make haste before salvation comes. Selah. Praise the Lord. When God begins to stir your heart, you don't know what may stop you. So move on time. So, where we are sitting now would not have been if it was not the grace of God. That story is our Ebenezer. The God who helped us. We have our own in the family. What are your experiences? I remember the, when we were going to have our son, we were rushing to the hospital. And we got around Agege. I, every time I get Agege, I feel like buying the whole of Agege. <laughs> because I went back to where poverty dealt with me before I escaped. It's really, I've gone back to the house. I need to come and buy this house. There's one in our village like that where I started, um, where me and poverty used to live together. Because then I, I used to farm. Every weekend I'll come back from school. Then we were doing some building there. Bricklayer work. I, I told my dad, tell me look for the photograph. Where I used to carry your basket, look, where I used to carry, you know, to do bricklayer work. Every time from school, you see me now, I'm posing. You don't know the problems I passed through. Is someone here? So, anytime I express gratitude to God with tears, you can't understand because you don't know the depth that I was put out from. So, that day we were going into the hospital, rushing, rushing. It was only a neighbor's car. We got around that gig. A, a background. A car from nowhere. Just dashed into the car. Boa. Somebody else's car. <laughs> you know, at that point, which one will you be looking out for? Is it the car or the baby or the mother? <laughs> I said, Father, which one will you look out for? Is it the car, the baby or the mother? All of them put together. <laughs> a good Samaritan till today. We don't have the name. We don't have the address. Everybody was in a frenzy. Where we be? We can't do why we exchanging food? There was no uh, DSM at that time. We got to the hospital. I rushed in with the stretcher. I didn't even bother about the car. It was when we came back, we realized a friend's car we borrow had been written off. And as God will have it, the company told him not to worry. We didn't have to pay a dime for the car. Ebenezer. The driver stranger that came, carried the mother and the baby, rushed to the hospital. In fact, we messed up his car. The water broke everywhere, was messed up. Till today, we don't know him. He left. He said, we should not worry. Today, the boy is still living. Ebenezer. Am I making sense? The Philistines will keep coming, but problems will keep returning. How do you make sure they keep permanently reversed? Raise your stone. Ebenezer. You don't have to stress yourself. Just remind yourself of what God has done. You don't need to tell him to do it again. Just remind him of what he did before. That stone is your reminder and is God's reminder. Once you are reminded, God will release the grace to reverse the problem from coming at you. That is a one-off wisdom. That Samuel used, and from what we read, from that first Samuel chapter 7, verse 13, the failing times never came to the space of Israel. How long? All the days of Simon. I don't know where God has elevated you to this year. Maybe as a manager in your department, you don't want anybody to give you problems at work. Every day you get to that office. Remember how God promoted you to be head of the department. All the days of Samuel, problems did not come up again. Hello, somebody here. I don't know what it is today that God has started and is halfway. And that halfway, remember, where they raised that stone of gratitude. While they were offering, verse 10 of 1 Samuel chapter 10, they were still offering to God. The Philistines came again. Maybe what you see today is a problem returning. Can you change your focus to gratitude returning to God? 
that the problem can return away from you. If Samuel had not raised that stone, there would have been nothing to subdue the Philistines. They will keep coming back, but do you keep offering gratitude to God to push them back? The problem is not the problem. It's lack of wisdom. May the Lord give us wisdom. Where you are, I want you to recall your own Ebenezer. I don't know the story your parents told you. You will script it, you will write it, you will recall it every time. I don't know what it is that you have also been exposed to. I don't know the expression of grace you have experienced before. But today is a day not to just show one of gratitude, but to commit to God. This will be a permanent expression. Ebenezer thus far the lord has helped us why we still have a far journey to cover but if we thank him for how he brought us here he will get us there if we continually constantly recall and remember what he did he will do more you just remind him but script it in a way you never forget it so i'll give you one minute you may not be able to write all of that while you are sitting, but in your heart, on the table of your heart, go or get as far back as when you were young. Because the Ebenezer means, remember, before they raised that stone, Ebenezer, the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 6, verse 2, 20 years after God brought back the ark, they had not done this before. Think back 20 years before now. Because after now, you will not need to come under pressure. 20 years, the ark came back from the space of the Philistines into their space, but it was not working for them. There was no connection with it because this expression of gratitude was missing. It took 20 years for Israel to realize what was missing. But the day they got it, all the days of Samuel, they never missed it anymore. Pressures from the Philistines never showed up anymore because the depth broke up. Recall it. Recall it. If you can even record it in your phone right now, it will, it will help you. Just recall it. God is our, our Ebenezer. The one that ensures that the supplies help before we get overwhelmed. Today is not a day to ask. Today is the day to ask for one thing, Lord. Remind me of the good, the help you have done for me. So I can put that before me to always express my gratitude towards you. That's all we're doing today. Israel was offering to God a sacrifice during that ceremony. The Philistines came again. After that, the only thing that Samuel did was to say, Father, thank you. And forever, the Philistines could not return. Not that they don't want to return. They could not return. Fortified space because of wisdom. Constant gratitude. Constant gratitude. Ebenezer, this is how far the Lord has helped us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray by the mercy of God. As you express your gratitude today, whatever is on the way to stress you, to stretch you, to distract you, may God intervene against it for you in the name of Jesus. Whatever you thank God for, the same problem, will never visit you again in the name of Jesus. Whatever God has promised you, no pressure will make you lose your faith over it in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray by the mercy of God, what to do this year to live a stress-free life. May the wisdom of God who has said in his light, we shall see light. May that wisdom open up your realm to that dimension of light in the name of Jesus Christ. You will know what to do this year.
no matter how stretched you are, you will not become stressed in your soul in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray by the mercy of God. Israel had the ark returned to their space for 20 years. They were lamenting. Grace was there, but there was no connection. I pray. Every measure of grace existing around you for you, may God open you up to it in the name of Jesus Christ. You will connect to your root. You will connect to your root. I pray I hear a word for someone today. Restoration. 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 Everything you have missed especially the timings of life. May God bring you under divine schedule now in the name of Jesus Christ. I hear the word restoration. You have missed your timing. Jesus says, some people don't know the time of their visitation. Something you have missed. May the Lord give you another chance. May the Lord give you a second chance. May the Lord bring back the opportunities you missed before in the name of Jesus Christ. What overwhelmed you because you were small? May God increase your strength and make you stable in the way you will overcome it the next time in the name of Jesus Christ. This year, losses will not multiply with you. May you smile over famine this year. May you smile over losses this year. What used to slow you down, defeat you this year, may God defend you against it in the name of Jesus. Your hands will not be weak. The Bible says the actor shot at Joseph, Genesis 49, but his bow remained in strength. This year, may you remain strong. May you remain sound in your mind. I hear the word for someone here, confidence. Your confidence is here will rise. You will be very confident you will confront the future well. You will not be afraid. This is not just your year. It's a year you will multiply. Everything that has reduced you this year, God cast them off from you in the name of Jesus. I hear again for someone, whatever deflates your confidence, the power of God destroys it now in the name of Jesus Christ. The mama says, your face will be set as a flint as you face the future. Going from this service, the Lord renews your confidence. You'll be very clear on how to make it this year. Father, I bless you. I thank you. I present to you your renewed heart. And for every decision and commitment that has been made to constantly express gratitude to you, I sanctify them in the name of Jesus. I ask you to bless them in the name of Jesus. The enemy will not take this reminder from us in the name of Jesus. And like you did for the children of Israel. When Samuel raised that stone of gratitude, and he said, Ebenezer, Lord, over families, businesses, hearts, and even this ministry, in spirit, we raise that expression of gratitude. And Lord, after that, he what says, you subdued the Philistines that they never came again to the camp of Israel all the days of Samuel. Throughout this year, every issue God resolves from you today, we never return again in the name of Jesus. And every issue that the heaven has already started resolving, there will be a completion in the name of Jesus. Your assurance will not fail. Your faith will not fail. I say your faith will not fail. What you believe God for, you will not be disappointed away. The God who has assured you will give you signs that will reassure you in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Peace in Jesus' name. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Do you want to put your hands together and say, Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. We bless your holy name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I believe this week, God will show you a sign. A sign this year will be stressless. All that Samuel did was not to call for a fast. Just raise a stone. As long as that stone is standing, no feeling signs come here. That's stressless success. While you are sleeping this year, you'll not be afraid of theft in Jesus' name. I pray for someone in your office, every gang up against you, you will smile over it in Jesus' name. 
Anything that is going on behind you against you, God will be resolving them before you get to know. Amen. Your bills this year will be easy to pay. Amen. I say your bills this year will be very easy to pay. Amen. Whatever will take stress away from you, every day you wake up, that's the first thing that will cross your mind in the name of Jesus. You see, as long as they saw that stone, just gratitude, not fast, not prayer, nothing too intensive. As long as they look at it, major issues are resolved. I pray again, as you wake up daily, ideas that will make life easy will cross your mind in Jesus' name. Amen. Every day you will start your day well. Amen. You will end your day well. Amen. It will be easy for you this year in Jesus' name. Someone that God has lifted in this service, can you shout your loudest? Hallelujah! As we go further in this service, I'd like to make welcome, Pastor Robert. God bless you.